You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me once again on our weekend edition of the Cabral House Call, where I answer all of our community's questions each and every Saturday and Sunday. I really look forward to these shows because it's my way of being able to connect with a lot of people that I would never get the chance to meet in my everyday practice here in Boston and then also through Skype as well, which probably right now we're doing a third of all of our appointments by Skype. And most of our health coaches actually work predominantly just through Skype alone as well. So, you know, it's really amazing just this type of technology with Zoom and with Skype and other things like that, that we can connect with people all around the world. And we literally work with people all around the world. Truly amazing. But really, the truth is this, that everyone that I speak with the stories are virtually identical. Now, the diseases, the symptoms, all of those things are not the same, of course. But the story of struggle and and what people are going through right now and kind of what they're experimenting with, what they're trying, that's identical. And so I really appreciate that. I really appreciate you know, people pushing forward against what they see as insurmountable odds because, you know, when they go to their PCP or they go to conventional medicine, they're given no hope. But the truth is, and we all know that we all know this kind of deep down that there is hope and that you can get better really no matter what you're struggling with. And that doesn't matter if you're someone who can't seem to take the weight off. You're someone who has an autoimmune disease and you just said, you know, you're just destined to live with that for the rest of your life because it's genetic or whatever it might be, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. But the truth is we know deep down that that's simply not true. We haven't had our whole life. We got it maybe in our 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, whatever it might be. And and we don't have to have it because there was a point in our life when we didn't have it. We can go back to that point in time. You really can. And I wouldn't be telling you that if it wasn't the truth. I did it myself. I see every single day, literally in my practice, that happening as well. Sometimes it's easier than others. There's no doubt about that. I'm not saying it's always a walk in the park or it's it's very, very simple and straightforward, but I can tell you that if it's important enough to you that you do make it a priority, that you absolutely can achieve that. And so on today's show, what I want to do is I want to answer your questions, but I want to do so with that same theme that we're going to give you a place to get started. And then you're going to keep moving forward one foot in front of the other, making sure that each and every day you're making progress. Because when you do that, it's only a matter of time before you really do get well. Well again. All right. So Jim's up first. Jim is asking, I work in a nuclear power industry. I am subjected to random drug testing. Would CBD oil or any of your other supplements test positive? My livelihood has been very good to me and I would not want to lose my job over these supplements. I also have had great success with the ketogenic diet. He talks about losing weight and uh, was on medication for a slow thyroid, not counting his starchy carbs. So I do eat six to eight cups of crucified vegetables every day. I'm going to try to do meatless Mondays. I stick with healthy fats, avocado, olive oil, moderate protein. I look forward to listening to your show each and every morning. I feel like you care about us, even though we have never met. God bless you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. I really do appreciate that. And I do. I care about each and every single listener. And this show is not about me at all. It's, It's really not. This is about me each and every day trying to give back honestly, what I never had. And that goes for a lot of people. And, and you know what? It's not just me. There's a lot of other people doing this same type of work. But I look at this with every industry. I'm, I'm trying to do a service of the best that I can. Honestly, the best that I can for the health, the weight loss, the wellness, the, you know, the anti-aging based industry. But there are people doing it in all of other industries as well. It's not what I specialize in. This is what I do. This is what I've dedicated my life to. So, I'm happy if I'm able to share some of those things with you. Now, none of our products should test positive on a drug test because there's nothing illegal. Like that's the bottom line. However, I will say that with CBD oil, you did hear me say on previous shows, and if you have not listened to our shows in CBD oil, they are far and away some of our most popular shows ever. We just have two. They've been within the last couple of weeks. You can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, and you can check that out. I'm not going to go back into those today. But what I want to say is this. If you use 
a larger dosage, meaning like five times the amount, five times the dosage, there's about a 2% chance that you could test positive on a drug test for basically marijuana. And in your state, that could be an issue because your state might not have legalized marijuana. Keep in mind, this is below 0.5 THC. You do not get any of the psychoactive components when using CBD oil. You only get all of the benefits, which are, I mean, believe me, please listen to those shows. There are so many benefits, everything from anti-cancer to anti-ADD, ADHD, um, digestive issues, lessen joint pain, lessen anxiety, lessen depression, helps with sleep, helps with insomnia. I mean, it's a phenomenal product and I use it myself. And honestly, it's really taken off. People love it. They rave about it, reorder because they it just it's changed their life. But having said that, if you can lose your job because they might be doing like a really strict drug test, they're actually testing for like cannabinoids, which are not illegal to take. That's what this is. THC is, but they're testing for that. Well, then you could test positive. And so what I say is just play it safe. Then it's just not the right product for you right now. But everything else, I mean, nothing else we sell, like where there's the all in one, they're just vitamins, they're minerals, they're whole foods, condensed in capsules. Because keep in mind, supplements are meant to give you what your body is lacking, what it needs more of. We are stressed individuals. Our food contains anywhere from 20 to 60% less nutrients than it did just the 1950s. So, I mean, this is real, this is real stuff. This is what I do myself. This is what I give to my family. This is give, you know, who I give to each and every person that I care for my practice. So, you know, get the nutrition. Maybe right now the CBD oil is not going to test. It's not going to be the best option for you. Or, you know, maybe you're willing to just use the, the one dosage per day, which is the half a dropper. That is, that's the recommended dosage. Again, people can use double that. They can use as much as they want if they don't have to do, you know, drug testing as well. So, you know, one day marijuana will be legal in all 50 States. Then you won't have to worry about, you know, this type of thing. But again, I'm not advocating people smoking cannabis or marijuana. I'm just talking about using cannabinoids, which is the uh, non-psychoactive component of cannabis that does not get you high, but gives you all of the massive benefits that come along with it. So hopefully, Jim, that answered your question. And I know I can't give you a direct answer. I'd love for you to be able to use the product, but of course, I don't want you to lose your job. And I think that's probably more important right now. Okay. Dave is up next. His question is, I just ordered the trial size for my son of CBD who lives in California. So another CBD question. Okay. He suffers from anxiety. I live in Canada. I suffer from psoriatic arthritis, which was triggered by colon cancer surgery in December, 2015. Psoriasis is in my family. I've lost about 40% use of my legs. Getting out of chair, climbing stairs, golfing and snow skiing are difficult and sometimes impossible risks. I'm 68 years old. In your podcast, you mentioned that CBD helps with psoriasis and arthritis. Do you think it would provide help for me. I'm going to a PSA clinic this Friday at Toronto Western Hospital for a second opinion. My rheumatologist since 2016 has had me on a combination of methotrexate, different types of drugs that he's using, but for 14 months, I'm nowhere near able to tee it up again. Thank you. Okay. So Dave, one thing is for right now, we have a hold on shipping our CBD oil out of the United States. We just want to make sure that it's copacetic, that even though it's legal in Canada, it's legal in the UK, that we're okay to do this. And so we're just keeping in the US, just again, like it's it's a shame, but it's just the world we live in. And you know, this is a natural product and it's an amazing product with over 962 clinical proven trials all on PubMed. This is all published research data showing the amazing benefits. And again, if you, we'll link it up in the show notes. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 478, I want to say today's show is, I could be way off. You know, it's 478 today. That we will link up the show in CBD, but we'll also link up the, the page that just tells you all about the product, all the different benefits. But here's my thing. So yes, CBD oil would help most likely with, uh, with psoriasis, but it's not a root cause based thing. So what you want to look at is this. So yes, yeah, symptomatically it will help. For psoriasis, we need to look at the gut. We need to look deep, deep, deeper into the body, a balance between TH1 and TH2 immunity. But that goes back into, is there candida overgrowth? Is there small intestinal balance? bacterial overgrowth. What is going on? Is there intestinal permeability? So my recommendation, Jim, is to do your organic acids test and we can ship that to Canada. And then we just give you a, um, you do a, a overnight to ship it back to the US. That will tell you about your yeast and bacterial overgrowth. It will tell you detoxification. You get a 30 minute health coaching call with one of my health coaches who are certified health coaches, registered dietitian. And also you get me reviewing your lab test. Now let's say, okay, you're not ready to do that. Maybe you just want to do the candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol, the, the actual protocol that we use to help clean up the gut. 
And then I would absolutely do the smoothie every morning just for a slow, just general overall detox. But you want to go much deeper as well besides just the CBD oil. Now, you can look for organic CBD oil in Canada, and our dosage is 24.2 milligrams. Remember, there's a lot of companies selling CBD oil. Most of it's not organic. And the other thing is as well, it doesn't use the CO2 extraction process, the cold process that we use. It's not eco-friendly, and typically their dosage is 5 milligrams. Ours is almost 25 milligrams, which is why you get the clinical benefit. You don't get clinical benefit from 5 milligrams. Most clinical studies use 10 to 20 milligrams minimum. A lot of autism-based studies use 50 milligrams. So again, don't fall for the marketing. Just go with the company that you trust. We love functional medicine-based companies and brands. Again, this is just one of those instances where we use 100 different products, uh, no one made CBD oil that was organic, and no one made it for functional medicine practitioners uh, that had a dosage above 20 milligrams. So that's, of course, what we had to do. There, I mean, you can take 20 milligrams or more of another company, but it costs you way more. It might be the same price as ours, but their dosage, you'd have to use five times the amount. So technically, it costs five times the amount of money if you were to get an actual clinical dosage. But Jim, like I said, this goes much deeper than CBD. You want to actually get down to what's going on with the gut, what's going on with the immune system. That's where I would start if you came into our practice. Okay. Okay. So did I just call you Jim? Sorry, Dave. This is for you specifically. And uh, I have Jim and Dave here for CBD questions. And then um, what else? Can I give you any other recommendations? Well, that's my main recommendations right now. Uh, please do feel free to write in if you have additional questions. And of course, if you have a specific question, you can also write to support at drballdetox.com. If it's a generalized question like this, we're happy to help. But if it's like a shipping question or something like that, you can just email support at stephengrubell.com or support at drballdetox.com as well. So Lindsay is up next. She wrote in, Hi, Stephen. I randomly get the odd dark hair growing out of all different areas, but they are very noticeable on my pale skin and other body hair is blonde. Why would this happen? Thank you for being my number one podcast. Thank you, Lindsay. We appreciate that. So happy to hear that we are up there on your uh, top podcast. And uh, I want to answer this question. It's very straightforward. When women get some dark hair growth, especially if you have blonde hair naturally, if the hair comes in thicker, it's typically an issue with androgens. Now, what are androgens? Androgens would be more like the hormone testosterone or it could be DHEA, or it can be a conversion of testosterone to DHT, which is dihydrotestosterone. So when these things happen, not only you know, can those dark hairs be a sign but also of, of these higher androgens, PCOS symptoms can start to creep up. And that's obviously not a good thing in terms of cysts and those types of things. I want you to really keep an eye on this. I want you to keep an eye on heavier cycles of menstruation. I want you to look at blood sugar imbalances. I want you to look at weight gain or water retention. I want you to look at thinning hair on the top of your head. I want you to look at insulin imbalance as well. And the best way to do this, honestly, is to run what's called our weight loss. I know it's not just for weight loss, but that's the name of the test. It's a weight maintenance test. You can go to stephencabral.com and just go to the weight loss tab. Yes, that's it. stephencabral.com forward slash store. Click on the weight loss tab. That will take you to that test. What you could also do if you wanted a little less expensive option is you could run the adrenal hormone test. That's going to show your cortisol all four times the day upon waking, right before lunch, mid-afternoon, and before bed. That's a phenomenal one. And it will also show you progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, and it will show you DHEA. Now, if you are still having a normal cycle, you'll do this test during day 21, day 22, or day 23 during your cycle on a normal stress day. That will let you know about your your hormones. But again, if you have really high levels of cortisol, really high levels of testosterone, uh, or higher levels of conversion from testosterone to estrogen, then we would use a product like Dim Evel or, or you know one of those to help with estrogen blocking effects. But really what we'd want to do is look at overall androgen production. So hopefully that helps. Try to decrease the sugar in your diet. That automatically helps right away. Decreasing overall stress, calming the body, uh, that will help. So it's a good place to get started. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, Sierra is up next. Hi, this is a long question, so I'm going to actually um, just give you the parts that are most pertinent to me answering. And then, of course, just go to stevencabral.com forward slash 478, and then you'll be able to read this entire question from Sierra. So it says, hi, Dr. Steven. I have a question related to some hair loss that I've been experiencing for about two and a half years old. I'm a 35-year-old female. I've been noticing some thinning hair. It may be related to stress, but there's no known instances of hair loss in my family. 
My hair is otherwise healthy, no shedding breakage. I've been to two dermatologists and I visited with an endocrinologist. I've had the following lab test done. My TSH is below 0.02 from 2016. My T4 is 1.35. My T3 is high at 189 and my iron is at 163. My ferritin is at 34, which is another form of looking at iron and that's low. And my vitamin D is 20.4. So initially... It was thought that I may have an issue with my thyroid and request to have a full panel, but with no luck for thyroid antibodies, the dermatologist instructed me to increase my iron intake for three months using 300 milligrams of a specific type of iron. And the endocrinologist instructed me to increase my vitamin D and to monitor my levels. Okay. So towards the end of the question, it says, as there has been no resolve, my dermatologist suggested a scalp biopsy as a last result. I'm not going through this process. What should I do going forward? I want to look a bit deeper. Is there any specific lab work I should have performed? I would love to come into your facility. However, I'm unable to afford any services as your facility does not accept health insurance. Very much looking forward to hearing back from you. All the best, Sierra. Okay. So Sierra, we are happy to help. And here's the thing. This is actually very straightforward. So sometimes conventional medicine is very puzzling to me. It really is. Because your levels are out of the healthy parameter. So this isn't even a functional medicine-based question, which looks at optimal levels. You legitimately have hyperthyroidism, meaning your TSH is below 0.5. So TSH for conventional medicine is 0.5 to 5.0 for most conventional medicine. For functional medicine, it should be around 0.5 to about 2.5 maximum. You're 0.02. So you are pretty much as low as you can go. And your T3 is high. You're showing hyper high thyroid. You're also showing low iron. And then they gave you a synthetic form of iron. Well, we have two possibilities of why your hair could be thinning or falling out or all of these different possibilities. One, hyperthyroidism can cause hair loss, just like hypothyroidism can as well. So we need to calm the hyperthyroidism, which is sometimes called Graves' disease. I'm not diagnosing you with Graves. I'm not saying that. But that's, if you look at your numbers, well, you can look it up. They correlate. Okay, so that's an issue. So we have to lower that thyroid response. We should also look at cortisol levels. You'd want to run an adrenal hormone lab as well. And the other thing is, If you're taking a non-food-based form of iron, iron oxidizes. It can become a free radical in the body. It can literally cause tissue damage, and some of that damage can be to the hair. So taking high levels of iron can also cause hair loss. That is possible. So yes, keep the vitamin D up, but also order a food-based form of iron. We like innate response. Uh, They have a nice iron response. That's a a food-based one. You can run a hair tissue mineral analysis. Why would I recommend that? Well, with a hair tissue mineral analysis, you could see if you have an overload of heavy metals. Heavy metals could cause hair loss. It can also cause this hyperthyroidism as well. One more test that you may want to run is the organic acid test for gut-based issues and potentially an IgG test. Or if you don't run the IgG test for your food sensitivity testing, we'll link all these up in the show notes today. You will definitely want to avoid dairy and gluten since those are the two most exacerbating foods for thyroid based issues. So hopefully that helps get you started and you should be well on your way with those notes right there. All right, two more questions to go today. Anna is up next. Hello, love your show. Can you use CBD oil if you are breastfeeding? Baby is seven months old. Also is using an infrared sauna okay for breastfeeding mother. Thanks, Anna. Okay, lots of CBD oil questions. I'm telling you right now, we have gotten so many questions on CBD oil. Usually we answer them, but this is a good one You know, by email. This is a really good one for the podcast. Okay, so here's your answer. The CBD oil should be completely fine for you to take orally for the baby as well. And here's why. Right now, and again, this is a, here's the thing. When it comes to your children, when it comes to a woman's pregnancy, any of those things, always do what you feel is most comfortable. But right now they're using CBD oil as in cannabinoids with babies, with children, with 
kids with autism and brain cancer. I mean, you can look this up. Just type in children's brain cancer and CBD oil, autism and CBD oil. So, I mean, like it's there. So here's the thing. I always give you my answer based on what I would do with my own wife. I feel like that's the most appropriate thing. That's the fairest thing to do so that I'm not trying to market you anything. I honestly, I think that's how I sleep at night. I always give you the recommendations that I feel comfortable with that I do myself, that I would do with my own family, parents, all that as well. So Yes, I would do the CBD oil. I'd have no problem with that. One dosage, which is the 10 drops under your tongue. You can start your day with it. You can end your day with it whenever you feel like you need it the most. Amazing product, bottom line. Okay, but no, I would not do the infrared sauna. The infrared sauna is too detoxifying and any heavy metals that start to get pulled from the body or anything that starts to get killed as well can come into the bloodstream and then also end up in your own milk supply as well. So it's a no on the sauna until you're done breastfeeding, but you can do a little light dry brushing if you want. That would be okay. And it's a no on heavy metal detoxes. It's a no on candida detoxes, unless it's just the clean gut probiotic. That would be okay. And it's a yes, in my opinion, on the CBD oil. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Aliana is up next. I have a recently been diagnosed with H. S, V, 1, and 2. And for everyone who doesn't know what that is, it's herpes simplex virus 1 and 2 and have been doing a lot of research on how to get rid of it. There are people out there that believe you can get you rid of your body of excess heavy metals, have excellent nutrition and using pure oregano. Have you any experience with this and do you believe it could work? Yes, I do. So uh, we work with herp, I mean herpes viruses. It's almost like one out of two people and, and some people it goes dormant and it never wakes up again and some people it's alive and well. And so here's the thing. We work with herpes simplex virus, all the different ones, herpes zoster, shingles from it, uh, chickenpox, all, all the different ones. So here's the thing. Herpes simplex virus, HSV1 and 2 are almost identical in terms of their virus, in terms of them as a virus and DNA. So they share about 50% of the same DNA, except one of them, HSV1, affects more of the nerves around the, the neck. It's called the trigeminal area. And the trigeminal area is right behind the ear, okay? So that's a big one. It can affect the face. It can affect the lips. It can affect cold sores. And then HSV2 is more affecting like the base of the spine. They call it the sacral ganglion. And, and that area can then affect like genital-based herpes. So it's more when you think of um, sexually active-based herpes virus, that's when you would think of that. But honestly, they're both treated the same exact way. That's the nice thing. So... There's a couple things that have been shown to work really well. Okay, one of them are things like the virusid. So that's in our adult immune protocol. Like the adult immune protocol that we have is fantastic. So besides the adult immune protocol, which I would be doing without a doubt for more than a month, and keep in mind, like we've helped people totally eradicate herpes zoster, cold sores, you name it. And I like to let people know, like I didn't invent this. What I do is I do the research. I pull all of that research together and then I use use that research by other brilliant people to help people. Maybe I assimilate it in my own way that's able to help people, but it's research also that's already been done that's out there, whether it's from Ayurveda, whether it's from traditional Chinese medicine, whether it's from functional medicine, whether it's from conventional medicine. I'm just doing what I know works, what I show works. So here's what else works. Apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar two to three times per day. So about two ounces and about six ounces of water. You can drink it as a tea. You can drink it regularly. Has been shown to help. Okay. L-lysine, L-lysine, 3000 milligrams a day has been shown to help. Zinc, somewhere between 30 and 50 milligrams per day of zinc. When you have an outbreak, magnesium has been shown to help. Now, magnesium, why would that help? Because it calms the central nervous system. What does the herpes virus do? It affects the central nervous system. It affects the nerves. Okay, vitamin C, a potent antiviral. So now you have three potent antivirals, zinc, lysine, and vitamin C. All three of those have been shown to work exceptionally well. Now, what else are people doing to help keep the herpes virus down? Well, they're doing anything that will lower stress in the body. So taking magnesium on a daily basis, calming their stress levels, meditating, that has been shown to help as well. Doing yoga, anything de-stressful. And then also, also when you have an outbreak, grapefruit seed extract and L-lysine also applied to the outbreak can help as well. Okay. Lastly, eliminating heavy metals, doing a heavy metal detox, like the one that we offer right on the stephencabral.com 
forward slash store website or just something like it. Again, like you can choose to do what you feel is best for you. I just want to offer you what we're doing right now in our practice that actually works, that I see it work clinically. That's my recommendation. Set up shop with those products. Do a smoothie every morning so you're getting all of your B vitamins, all that good stuff. And make sure you're staying away from high L-arginine foods. High L-arginine foods, at least for now. You don't have to worry about in the future, but high L-arginine foods can cause a flare up as well. And again, I've talked about this many times, spoke about it many times before on the Cabral concept. So if you go to stevencabral.com forward slash podcast, you press a little command F on your computer and you type in herpes or you type in cold sore or you type in zoster or anything like that, you will get all of my previous shows on this. Also talking about this from just different angles. And that's how you get more information as well. But there's no doubt in my mind that you don't have to live with this for the rest of your life. Now there's debate. There is certainly debate right now. Can you ever fully eradicate viruses like the herpes virus, Epstein-Barr virus, you know, or does it just go dormant? Let's leave that discussion for another day. What I can tell you this is that you never have to see that virus again, okay? Whether it stays dormant but still in your body is a different question. But what I know specifically is you never have to have another outbreak again. If you just call it managing the virus, fine. Call it whatever you'd like. But you can keep it down by keeping your immune system strong, by keeping your immune system balanced. So hopefully that helped today. That was the last question on today's house calls. We actually had one more question, but they they wrote in last minute saying, okay, I'm going to do a consultation. I don't want to actually have the uh, question answered on the Cabral house call. Just want to keep it really anonymous. But that the reason for me saying this is please always keep in mind, I'm, I will answer your questions just write in anonymous. Like no problem at all. I'm very, very happy to do that. My goal is that I believe that everyone who asks a question right now, there's someone else with that same exact question. So I know that will help a lot of other people out there, hopefully. All right. Once again, thank you for tuning into the Cabral Concept. I do truly appreciate each and every one of your listens. And I really appreciate your reviews as well. We've gotten so many more reviews over the past week. Can't thank you enough for that. If you're able to go on whatever the iTunes account or whatever you're listening to this podcast on, and if you could just leave a short review, uh, it would really mean a lot to me. That's how we're able to kind of just move up in the charts. The more we move up in the charts just means the more people that we can actually get this message out to. That's what it's really all about. Thank you once again, and be sure to come back tomorrow for our Motivation and Mindset Monday. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients, and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable, and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques Did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy? I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.